So th here's a problem that you may experience uh, with your websites. This is a pizza website from my other 1430 class, and one of the students had this problem, and she said I'd be okay if I showed her site here for this video. So here's the problem. This is, nothing is wrong with her code at all. Um, it's actually a side effect of using this free server that we have. So if you go down here in the bottom, and you see this little form down here, I try to put something in it. If I click the reset button, it doesn't reset, okay? The code is fine. The problem is this little banner right here, this powered by web host thing, is interfering with that. And that's, if you are using the free site, then this banner will be in the way. So first thing to know is I'm very aware of this problem, and when I grade your homework, that will not affect your grade because I can test it just by resizing the window, and now it works just fine. So that's how I'll test it. So don't worry too much if you run into that problem. But you do want to make sure the reset button or whatever button is you're having problems with really does work. So the way you resize your window like that, if you hold your, at least on a PC, if you hold the control key down, scroll up and increases the size, scroll down, decreases the size. If you don't have a scroll wheel, then control minus sign will shrink your page and control plus will increase the page. So shrink the page up, test the button, make sure it works if, it, if you have a problem with it. The other thing is, um, oftentimes when I test these, if I right click here, go to inspect, um, and I'll actually go down to that actual item right there. And I can, you can delete it from here. It doesn't delete it from your web page. It'll only delete it until I refresh the page again. But if I right click on that and delete, that little button goes away now. And so I can, again, I can test your code and you can also test your code without it there. Third thing, let's refresh this. There is a way to target this in your CSS, okay? Uh, I'm gonna leave that as an exercise for you to figure out, um, but you can target that. You have to get pretty specific with it, but I would target it by maybe the attributes. Um, and every semester, I show people how to target that and it seems like every semester this website company, they figure out what I'm doing or something and they change something so that the targeting doesn't work anymore. So it's just a, it's an exercise in futility almost. Now, the one last thing, but if you want to try to target it and get rid of it, you can. One last thing is um, what the solution that this student's going to be doing is she's going to put a padding. I told her to hold off so I could show the live site here, but she's going to put padding underneath that button there. So uh, if I do inspect and let's take a look at the form here. So she's probably going to style the form. Uh, I think that's what she said. Let's just if I can get the actual CSS here. Um, no, I'm trying to get this out of the way. There we go. Right here. So the form, uh, if you just put some padding in there, Get in there. Why aren't you letting me edit that? Usually I can just edit that with no problem. Use your agent style sheet, that's why. Huh. Uh, I was just gonna, I don't, I don't have access to your actual CSS file, so I can't edit that. I was just gonna edit it right here in the console, but it's not letting me edit that. So that's fine. Uh, let me just see if I can add something. Yeah, I can't do it. That's fine. But anyway, the idea is she's going to put some padding on this form here, and that will push it a little bit further away from the bottom of the page, and hopefully that will solve the problem or put a margin on it or something like that to get it away from the bottom of the page. So hopefully that won't be an issue anymore. But don't worry. As long as you test it like by shrinking it and it works, when I look at it, I will. I, that's how I test it. So don't worry too much if it's not working. But as an exercise in understanding CSS, you might want to try targeting it <clears throat> or try playing around the padding or something like that, okay? Any questions about that? All right, so let's take a look at where we're going to be going on going today. Uh, module three was the midterm module, and we did our prep last time, and the midterm is due this Sunday. And again, if you have questions about that, this video is pretty thorough of what I'm expecting here, but that is due this Sunday. And then we're moving on to today, Module 4, which is Advanced CSS. We're going to dive into CSS selectors today, 
CSS animation on Thursday, and then we're going to take a little peek at what the, what is the grid, which is a cool new way for styling CSS, and then you guys are going to watch me code up a whole website from ground from the ground up. Uh, that'll be in about a week or two. All right, so let's dive in to advanced selectors. There's not a lot of lecture notes in here, information in here, but this recording is going to cover everything. So I'm going to start off with a little project using my web template here. Copy and paste. Just rename it to advanced selectors number three. Edit that. And edit the style sheet. Okay. So let's do a brief little recap of what we do know about selectors, okay? So I'm going to put in here a bunch of divs, okay? And if I look at that page right now, what do I expect to see? Nothing, yeah, because there's no style in the divs, there's no text in them or anything like that, okay? All right, but let's talk about the selectors we do know. We know how to select all of some element, right? All divs, all paragraphs, all images. How would I select all of those divs? Just type div, that's it. And I've just now targeted all divs. And I'm going to put a border on them, one pixel, solid um, gray. And um, width is 100%. Height is 75 pixels. There we go. So I have all these divs here that we're going to be playing around with. Okay. What other what selectors do we know about that we've formally, officially talked about? Class. Okay. How do I do that? Yep. Put a class name on a div, right? Class name equals some class, whatever. Okay. And what's the other one? ID equals some ID or whatever, right? So how do I target the class? Yep, so I can just do dot uh, some class. Is that what I called it? Or I could do div dot some class. What's the difference between those two? Yeah, so if I do div dot some class, that means it has to have the class some class, and it has to be a div. If I do this... It could be any element, like a paragraph that has that class or whatever, right? So we're going to be a little bit more specific. And we'll just, you know, background color is red or whatever. And there we go. We targeted that one. Okay, how do I target the one with the ID on it? The what? The what's it called? There we go. Octothorpe, yeah. Yep, div, octothorpe, and uh, some ID, I think I called it. Background color pink, right? There we go. Okay, so that's stuff we already know. We know how to do all of those. There's one other one that we've talked about, um, and it's I, I've called it the child selector. That's technically not correct. Um, you'll see when we get to the other child selector, but um, let's say I want, like, I have a paragraph right here. Hello. Right, and I wanted to select that paragraph. How would I do that? I could just select all paragraphs, right? But if I wanted to be specific, what would I do? Nope, I just want that paragraph right there. There we go, div p, right? So that means give me any paragraph that's a child of a div, right? That's what that means. And so we'll say color of the font is orange. Semicolon. And there it's teeny, but there it is, right? So that lets me target. So in other words, if I had a paragraph that was not inside of a div, not in a div, That one is not targeted. It's just plain black text because it's not inside of a div. So this is what I've been referring to as a child selector, OK? 
okay? There's actually a technical actual selector we'll look at later. That's called the child selector. Um, but we'll talk about the differences in a few minutes. Okay, but those, everything I've just shown you, we've used pretty much every day in class. You should be familiar with those, but I want to make sure. Do we have any questions about those basic ones? Okay, we feeling okay there? Okay, I'm going to clear off most of the CSS here. I'm just going to leave the div CSS, and that's it. So we can have something to work with here. So now we just have, whoops, get rid of that paragraph there. And get rid of these classes, all this extra stuff here. And put a few more back in. Okay, there we go. Back to this. Okay. So now let's look at a couple of selectors that you have seen. I've briefly shown you in class. Um, and, um, but we haven't spent a lot of time on them. Uh, well, there is one that we have spent a lot of time, and that's the hover selector, right? Colon hover. Those are actually called pseudo classes, okay? The ones with the colon in front of them. So we know how that one works. Anything that when you're hovering over some element, the style is applied only when you hover. So for example, I could say something like div hover, and we'll say background color brown. So now, anytime I hover over div, I get this effect, right? That's pretty cool. Also, though, notice uh, this is a little bit of a tangent here, but since we're looking at this, I'll show you. See how my pointer is is a an arrow. Sometimes you'll want that to be a little finger, like you, when you're going to click on something, right? You can actually control your cursor with CSS. So I'm going to put in here on the hover state that uh, cursor is pointer. So now when I hover, it looks like a little finger, which means that maybe something's supposed to happen. I'm supposed to click or something, okay? All right, but again, hover's one we've already done, we already know about. So let's look at some that we've seen but we don't know a ton about. And that is the following list right here. Nth, or sorry, nth child and first child and last child and nth last child. Okay. Back in the early days of CSS, uh, targeting your elements was relatively straightforward still, but we didn't have near as many options as we do today. We have dozens and dozens of ways to target our, our, H, our HTML. CSS is extremely robust, and with the, the latest updates to CSS, um, there's a lot of really cool things you can do. So before I show you what these can do, I want to quickly show you where you can find more information. So if you go into the modules for the curriculum for the course, and you look in module two, which is the CSS module, very top here we have resources. And if you scroll down right here underneath CSS basics, you'll see CSS tricks. Go to CSS tricks, and this whole left side is all the selectors. Look how many there are. Okay, we're not even going to cover half of them. We're going to cover a bunch of them today, but there's a whole bunch of different selectors here, okay? So make sure you go there to, to see the selectors. All right, any questions about the basic stuff? We ready to dive into some new fun ones? Do you guys remember what any of these do? We've talked about these three briefly in the past. Yeah, tell me what you remember. Okay, good. Yeah, exactly. So let's take a look at a couple examples of that. So if I do div first child, that means it's going to give me the first of all the divs that, that are together, okay? And we'll just say um, background color is orange. And here we go. Semicolon. There we go. So now the, f the first div is orange. If I said the last child... The last one's orange. Okay, that's pretty standard, pretty, pretty uh, common sense there. Um, also, notice the colon here. These are pseudo classes, right? Normally, we would apply a class to the div in the HTML, 
But notice we have no classes or anything in here. So we're creating like a pseudo class and that's called last child. Back in the day, if you want to do something like that, you would just give it a class called last child and, and you would put it on the last div and you would target that in your CSS. Well, we're doing it with this pseudo class. So last child is very flexible. And the reason that's useful, if once you, if you get into web development and you get any kind of backend programming to go along with it, oftentimes you're pulling the content out of a database. And so you may not know how many divs you're going to have. Right now, I know that there's 12 or whatever because I just put them there. But if I'm pulling it from a database, which maybe is controlled by somebody else, I don't know the full amount of divs I'm going to have. And I just know that I want the last one highlighted. So maybe the last one's the seventh one. Maybe it's the 15th one. Who knows? So that's why something like that's useful. All right, but let's look at the nth child. And the nth child, we put a number in here. And this means it's going to target the fifth element. So what do I mean by the fifth element? Well, it's the fifth one down. Let's go here. Did I save it? I did not. So now it's one, two, three, four, five. It targets the fifth one. Okay. In any given list of a bunch of divs or a bunch of LIs or a bunch of paragraphs or whatever, it's very easy to target, you know, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one by using nth child. But what if you wanted like the third one from the bottom? And again, you don't know how big the list is going to be. Okay. Yeah. I do not. No. No. It gets, well, in this case, because of what I targeted, I just said, give me divs. But if I said, you know, if I had something like this and there was a surrounding div, then that, that would not do anything, right? Okay. But in this case, I was targeting specifically just the divs. So how do we get to the, I want maybe the third from the bottom? Well, there's this new one we haven't talked about. It's not new, but we haven't talked about it. It's new to us. Called nth last child. Okay. And so nth last child, that means second from the bottom, okay? So now it's the second one from the bottom of the list. There's the bottom of the list right here. I could say the third from the bottom or whatever, and now it's the third one from the bottom. So again, that's useful in situations where you don't necessarily know how many divs you're going to have. And by the way, when you guys learn how to write JavaScript here in a few weeks, um, you'll also learn how to add divs and, and add content to the web page dynamically. Uh, based on user choices or whatever. So you can use JavaScript to inject the HTML into the page. And again, it might be a scenario where you don't know how many divs there are going to be. So that's why this one's useful. So any questions about that basic idea? Okay, any questions about that? Okay, let's take a look at the nth child again because there are so many cool things you may not know about the nth child. For example, I don't have to put a number in there. I can actually target all of the odd ones. So let's say I'm going to call them lavender, and I'm going to target the even ones and make them this fabulous color called orchid. Okay, so that's going to make every other row a different color if I do that. So let's take a look here, and now I get this kind of an effect, right? So I can just do the odd ones and the even ones that way. I can just do the e the odd ones and leave it like that. Okay, which is a nice looking effect. And I actually use this on one of my websites, mylovelyassistant.com, right here. I did not build this website, by the way. I bought it, I acquired it. Um, we'll go with acquired. <laughs> um, but uh, it's using that same idea, right? That every other line is highlighted. That's by using either the odd or the even or whatever, okay? All right, so now, um, there's other things though. There's actually, you can put a formula inside of this, uh, this spot here instead of a number. The formula looks like this. And don't type this because these are placeholders, okay? The A would be replaced with some number and the B would be replaced with some number. The N actually is literally the, the letter N. So the plus something is actually optional. Let's show you what it looks like first if I do something like this. 3n, okay? This means every third row. So I can target every third row. I could target every fifth row, right? Or target every tenth row, whatever I want to do. Let's go back to the third. If I decide to add in this extra number here, 
let's say I do uh, a two here. Okay, let me show you what that does. What this means is start at the second row and then do every third row, right? So it's starting at the second row and then one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So I could say start at the fifth row and then do every third one from there. So it's the first one to be highlighted will be the fifth row and then every third one from there. So there's lots of the different things you can do here with this formula right here. And um, as somebody pointed out in my last class, 3n plus 3 is the same thing as just 3n. Okay, it's the same thing. Because 3n plus 3 means start at the third row. Well, we're already saying do every third one. Okay, that's a ton of stuff you can do with the nth child. There's so many ways you can target your code with, the, with the using this, um, this particular selector, okay, this pseudo class. Okay, any questions about that one? So let's look at the next one. This one's pretty crazy what you can do with it. This one's called the attribute selector. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and clear this stuff out of here. Let me leave it on the screen for a second so if you're pausing the video, you see it. Okay. The attribute selector. We've actually looked at this one briefly. Um, I think uh, Jared asked about it uh, one day and I showed him this, showed you guys this in class. So the attribute selector, let me put some extra HTML here to show you how we might do this. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, image source equals Phil Murray. And I'm going to put an alt attribute. Um, and the alt attribute will just say picture of Phil Murray. Okay. You guys know what the alt attribute does? Yeah, if the image doesn't load properly for some reason, then it will put um, some placeholder text. Uh, let's do 75, not 750. Let's see how that looks. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, and then let me put in uh, some anchor tags here. Also, I'm going to add a couple um, pages that are local to the website here. Um, so, in other words, they're going to be uh, a contact page and the about page and products page. I'm not going to actually create these pages, but I'm just going to have the links here to show you, demonstrate something here. Of course, that's going to be contact.html. And that's going to be about.html, and this will be product.html. Okay, so there we go. There's our fabulous navigation. Let's take a look at this. There we go. Okay, so now let's talk about this attribute selector. We can actually select things in CSS based on their attributes. Notice here again. No classes, no IDs, nothing. We're doing this all strictly with raw CSS. So, for example, I'm going to target, let me do one more image here. I meant to do one without the alt. And we'll give that a 300. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to target the images and then the square brackets. This is when you're targeting the attributes, okay? So you say the name of the, the tag you're targeting, followed by square brackets, and then what goes in the square brackets determines how you target the image or the whatever, okay? So in the square brackets, I'm going to put alt. This one thing by itself simply means if the image has the alt tag, target it. If it exists in there, target it, which means it's going to target all but this last one here, right? So let's just quickly do something like border 10 pixels, uh, outset red, and 
links. There we go. You get a nice little red frame around three, three of the four pictures. This one doesn't have the frame because it doesn't have an alt tag. Okay? So if I were to delete the alt tag here, then that one won't have a frame either. Okay? So this is just targeting ones that have an alt. Now, that's not necessarily the most useful scenario, right? Targeting ones with just an alt. But the point is, any tag that has a specific attribute, just the fact that the attribute exists, that's enough, okay? Now, we can be more specific. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, can you do just square brackets all of them? Like, you mean like this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that, that's just, because um, there are other things, for example, um, href can be found in other places um, other than just an anchor tag, for example. So, yeah, you could target all things that have the alt tag. Yep. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is I want something specific in the alt tag. I want the ones that have, so let's put this alt back in here, and we're going to say picture of Bob, okay? Um, let's imagine that we're a different picture, obviously. So what I want to do now is I want something where specifically the alt tag says picture of Bill Murray. And it's case sensitive. Forgot to mention that. Okay. So now it's only targeting the ones that say picture of Bill Murray, where the alt tag has exactly the phrase picture of Bill Murray. Okay. And that is case sensitive. Okay. That's one of the few things in, in the world of HTML and CSS that actually case does matter. Okay. So picture of Bill Murray. So that's pretty straightforward. What if I wanted to find just the word bill. You can actually do that. Okay, so I'm going to add something back here. Alt equals um, billiard ball. Maybe this is a picture of the eight ball or something like that. Okay. So now if I say in here, so let's just first make sure nothing changed. Okay. If I say in here that I want to find just the word bill, it would look like this. Star. Star equals bill. This means somewhere in the alt tag it has the word bill, right? And you'll notice that it also finds this last one here because it has the word billiard. And bill is in billiard, okay? That may not be the effect you want, right? Maybe I want just the name bill. So you can actually target just the name bill as well, all right? And the way you do that, rather than saying star equals, we're going to say... Um, I believe it's the tilde, yeah, tilde, okay? Tilde equals. What this means is I want to find the word bill amongst a, a bunch of words that are separated by space. So I'm looking for exactly the word bill in a space-separated list of words. Well, isn't that what we have here? It's a space-separated list of words, picture, space, of, space, bill, right? So we're looking for any scenario where this happens. Okay, so now if we refresh, it goes back to just those two. And if I put in here, you know, bills or something, it will not find that one. Okay, it's looking for exactly the word bill in a space-separated list. Okay, so that's the, um, the just put the tag in there. Then there's the star equals. There's also just the plain equals. And then there's the tilde equals, right? We've looked at all those. Let me comment that out so I don't screw up my code here. Okay, there are more, though. There are, there are a few more. Uh, so one of the ones that I use a lot is starts with, okay? So we're going to switch over to targeting these anchor tags here now. So notice the two different types of anchor tags I have. These three are going externally to some site that is not mine. Okay, so these three um, are links that go external, okay? They go to some site that's not ours. These three go to a, our internal website on our server or whatever. So I want them to look different. I want the ones that are going away to be styled differently than the ones that are staying in. So I can actually do that by targeting the href property with the attribute selector 
and saying anything that starts with HTTP. So that would look something like this. Anchors with an href that starts with, and this is the one we've used before in class, HTTP. All right, so this anchor, this uh, caret symbol, the one above the six means starts with. So caret equal means starts with. So now I can target those and I can say, you know, uh, color is orange and um, font size is 35 pixels and, and font family is the home or whatever, okay? So now just those three links will be targeted and they'll look different. Obviously, this is ugly style here, right? But this is just me demonstrating the point. Okay, so now I'm able to style those three links differently from my other three links, okay? So that starts with, uh, there's another way I could target these directly, and that's ends with, right? I can target something that ends with HTML. If I wanted to do that, let's go ahead and add them to my list here, caret equals. If I wanted to target stuff that ends with, I could say a href, and ends with is dollar sign equal HTML. That means the last thing at the very end is HTML. And we could just say text decoration none, font, I would just go with color, black, leave it like that. And now those links have been styled differently. We can target them individually, okay? Does that make sense? There's lots of different ways you can target with this attribute. There's one more, which is a little bit tricky. I have to kind of contrive an example. Okay, and that's this one. It's the pipe equal symbol, okay? And the pipe equal symbol is, let me give you a, a scenario here that will give you the idea. Oops. Class equals main dot something something. Okay, we're going to go with main content div, and we're going to go with um, main display box, main navigation div, and main image holder, whatever, okay? And one last one here, class equals maintenance stuff. Okay, so here's what's happening. This is this style here of of creating um, classes is very common. Um, there's a there's actually a, a programming paradigm out there. And I can't remember what they call it, but it's it has to do with how you name your classes. Okay, and one of the ways that you do it is by giving the very first word in a series of dashes to mean to sort of group things together. So there's main stuff, and then there's there's, um, you know, sub stuff, and you'd have a bunch of classes called sub dash whatever, okay? So this naming convention is one that's used out there. You may prefer it. I, I don't necessarily use it. Sometimes I do. But what this next thing allows me to do is target all the stuff that starts with main like this, okay? Now, I could do this. I could say div um, class uh, starts with main dash. I could do that, right? And anything starts with main dash, we want the background to be pink or whatever. Okay, that works just fine. Okay, so all the main dashes start with pink. Okay, have pink. I could say where it includes main, but what's wrong with doing that? See the problem? It's going to target this one, too. We don't want to target that one. I just want to target the ones that have the word main. Okay, so one way I could do it is this main dash trick I did a second ago. Or you can do this. Pipe equals. Okay? Pipe equals main means it starts with whatever words in quotes, and that word is inside of a dash separated list. Okay? So that will only capture main dash. That's, that starts with main dash, okay? 
So that is the equivalent of um, class main dash. Those two are selecting the same thing. Okay. To be honest, I don't know of a good use case for this that where this one wouldn't just do just as well. I've never really used this one, but that is what it does. So we can now again see that it's only going to select those four there. I just refreshed the page. Okay. All right, any questions about those? There's a lot of different things you can do with this attribute selector here, all these different things right here. What does the plain equal do? It, literally that, that if it's equal to that value in quotes, then it targets that. Okay. Yep. So if I said this, class equals main, then that would target anything where the class is exactly main. But it wouldn't target like main dash. No, it targets where the class is exactly main. Yeah, just, exa just that. That was the first one we looked at where we said um, alt equals picture of, oops, of Bill Murray, right? It targets exactly the one picture that says, or the, anything that says picture of Bill Murray. All right. Uh, any other questions? Okay. So let's take a look now. I'm going to clear all this stuff again except for the div, and let's get rid of the images, all this stuff, much more divs, okay, back to this position. Okay, now we're going to talk about children and siblings, okay, um, and these are, um, they're a little trickier, but they're not too bad, okay, question? Oh, oh just waving, <laughs> okay. All right, so um, we talked about earlier this idea that if I had a paragraph in here, and if I wanted to target that paragraph, right, the way I would target that is div p, right? That's, a, that's what I've been calling a child selector. Well, there's also a child selector that's more of a direct child selector, okay? So let me give you an example of that. Let's clear this out. And inside of here, I'm going to put a UL li that says item one. And it's two, three, four, five, six. And then we're going to do another li. But inside of this li, it actually has a UL. Okay? This would be how you might make a submenu, by the way. Right? You have your navigation in the li's, and then underneath one of those allies, you might have another whole UL with more menu items, right? So we'll go um, li and uh, we'll say sub item one, okay? And two, three, four. So I'm, now I'm gonna close this UL, close the li, which is its parent, and close the main UL, okay? All right, now, right now, if I say um, div li, believe it or not, that will target all of the li's, okay? That's no different than just saying this, okay? Because, well, it's no different than saying this if, as long as all of the li's are inside of a div, which in this case they are. So div li, and I'm going to say, I'm going to get rid of this right here for just a minute. And I'm going to say um, color red, all right? Okay? Don't worry about the fact that it's overlapping those divs. That's because of the overflow. We're just going to ignore that problem, okay? Now, let me turn that, that, um, that margin thing back on here. And there's no margin on anything, right? Now, what I've done, though, let me make sure we're clear on this. I said, give me all LIs that are children of a div. Well, isn't this a child of UL, though? And isn't this a child of a UL that's a child of an LI that's a child of a UL that's a child of a div? Right? So what this selector is, I've always called it the child selector, but the truth is it's the child and grandchild, right? It selects anything. 
It's the descendant selector. Anything that is a descendant of you, okay? If I want to be specific, there's a way to be where I mean literally, the, like you are literally the child, not a grandchild, right? So first of all, let's put some padding on this or some margin, margin left. I want to show you one other thing that's happening here. Okay. All right. So uh, let's do like 40. Okay. So my question is now, why is this group one through six over 40, but this one appears to be over like maybe 80 or something? Actually, there is no margin. I have margin set at zero. Yes. So, oh, maybe I misunderstood what you're saying. Try, say it again. Yeah, okay. You're right. I apologize. Yeah, I misheard you. Yep, that is correct. So what's happened here, because of this right here, these five or six items here, they're moved over 40 pixels, right? But then... This is also an ally, and it's supposed to be moved over 40 pixels from its normal spot. So it's moved over another 40 pixels, right? Does that make sense? So thank you. Sorry about that. I misunderstood you. Okay. All right. So now, what if I wanted those to sort of be lined up here? Let's get a little bit more specific. What I want is a UL that's a, so a div that has a child that's a UL that has an ally. But notice, it doesn't change anything, Okay because it still has ULs and LIs as grandchildren, okay? But if I were to say this, what this means is give me an LI that is a direct child of a UL where that UL is a direct child of the div, okay? So now we get this, okay? Because take a look at this, what this is targeting. An LI, that's a direct child of a UL. Let's look at that. Is this, are these LIs a direct child of a UL? Yes. yes, they are. Okay. But is that UL a direct child of a div? It is not. It's a direct child of an LI. So this, however, these LIs are direct children of a UL that happens to be a direct child of a div. Okay. So this greater than symbol, if you will, Imagine it more like an arrow. It's saying, the div is saying, my UL children and their LI children. Direct children only, not grandchildren. That's what's happening there, okay? Notice how specific we can be, again, without applying a class or anything here. We can be very specific. Normally, back in the day, you'd have to just put a class on everything. Now you don't necessarily have to. I still do, depending on what's, what I'm doing, but but there are a lot of cool selectors like this. Okay, any questions about that one? So the question was, could I do div, ul, li, ul, li? I could do that, but it wouldn't be targeting what I'm targeting here. It'd be targeting something else, right? So if I did div, ul, li, ul, li, like that, this is targeting these guys down here, right? This, however, is not targeting those. This is targeting these li's right here. Okay, because this is saying, give me an LI that is a child of a UL, that's a child of an LI, that's a child of a UL, that's a child of a div, right? An LI, that's a child of a UL, that's a child of an LI, that's a child of a UL, that's a child of a div. This one says, give me an LI that is a direct child, not a grandchild, but a direct child of a UL. So let's start there. That is true here, right? It's a, it's a direct child of a UL. It's also true here. But... The next thing is that UL also needs to be a direct child of a div. And in that case, this UL is not a direct child of a div. This one is, though. Okay. All right. Other questions? Okay. Let's take a look at um, what's called the... There's two um, selectors that are kind of known as uh, combinators, where you can combine things. Okay. So... Let's get some more code here. I'm going to kill all this UL business. Okay, and let's do um, an image. And we'll do another filmer here. OK, 
Okay, and we're going to do a paragraph. Hello. Okay, and then we'll do a paragraph up here. And we'll say above image. All right, something like that. Good. Okay. So now what I'm going to use here is the, it's, it's called the um, adjacent sibling combinator selector. Okay. And it looks like this. It's the plus sign. Okay. Let me style it and then I'll tell you what it means. Background, or sorry, just color red. Okay. What this means is select any paragraph that is a, a direct sibling of another paragraph, meaning the thing directly above it is a paragraph. Okay, so looking at our CS or our HTML, which ones of these is go are going to be hit? Is this one going to be changed? Now, basically every other, right? Uh, not quite. In, in this scenario, right here, for this, it would be this one's not going to be hit, but this one is because its direct sibling is a paragraph. This one will not be hit because this direct sibling is an image, but all the ones after it will be because they are direct siblings, right? So it looks like that, okay? This one did not get hit because it's a sibling to an image, right? But I could have done this. Instead of PP, I could do image P. Now it's direct sibling of an image, which will only get that first one right there. Okay, it's one, so that plus symbol basically means that those two follow each other, right? The image is then followed by a paragraph or whatever, okay? And followed by not nested inside of, right? They're not nested inside of each other. They're, they're siblings, okay? There's another funky one here. And this one's called um, the uh, general sibling combinator, and it's the tilde symbol. What this means is take the image and all paragraphs that follow it will be applied to this style, okay? So now all of those will be read. So anything that comes after an image, right, until it's interrupted by some other, um, if it's nested, for example, let's stick this all inside of a div tag here, okay? Well, that's horrible looking. Okay, this will still hold, no problem. We're having an overflow problem, but just ignore that, okay? Um, so that still holds, and as, if I keep adding images here, or, uh, or paragraphs here, it's fine, but if I put a paragraph that's outside, outside, okay, it's outside of this group, the, the parent of this image and all these other guys is this one div right here, right? The moment I break out of that div, that this paragraph will no longer be targeted. Did I save it? Yes. Oh, it's all the way at the bottom down there. Where is it? Oh, it's inside the image right there. Yeah, stupid overflow. But you see that it's not being targeted, right? Let me move that to another. Let's put a couple more divs in here. That moves it down a little bit. There we go. Okay. So the point that I'm getting at is this selector right here means take the image and then all paragraphs that follow it as long as they all have the same parent, okay? Because that the key there is that they're general siblings. They're siblings. The moment we're in another paragraph that's in another div, these guys are no longer siblings, right? That makes sense? Okay? Any questions about that? So let's pause and gather our thoughts for a minute here. We've looked at a lot. I'm going to show you uh, four more that are really cool. Um, the other class didn't get to see because we ran out of time. But since this is not a hybrid class, we have more time in it. Um, but first of all, I want to make sure you guys understand, you pretty much can get away with targeting your entire HTML with no classes. You pretty much can do that. If your site starts to get overly complicated, it might be a little bit harder. But when you combine the fact that we talked about a, a couple class periods ago, this idea that we have um, the nav tag and the footer tag and the header tag and all these other tags. And if you use those tags properly and semantically, 
you can you can get away with no classes at all, at all in any of your CSS and any of your HTML. Um, I'm not a big fan of doing that because with a class, I know I can be extremely direct, and so I I still don't tend to code with all these pseudo all these different selectors. I should say not pseudo selectors, but all these selectors. Uh, I still use a lot of them though. I use the attribute one a fair amount, and I use the first child, nth child, last child quite a bit, um, and so I do use some of them. But there's so many, and every one of you are going to see these and go, oh, I know exactly how I would use this. And if I asked every one of you what that thought was, you'd all have a different answer, which is awesome, right? You guys would all have different answers. So um, let's take a look at the last group here. These are called pseudo elements, okay? What's an element? This is a word I've used a couple times, but I haven't really spent a lot of time talking about. I'm just wondering if anybody remembers. Yeah. Yeah, it's a tag, right? Basically, it's a tag. So tag and element are interchangeable. And when we get to JavaScript, you'll be hearing me use the word element more and more because that's more how it's referred to in JavaScript. So I'm going to clear all this junk out of here. And this one. And so a pseudo element, remember we have pseudo classes, right, where we could say, like, uh, hover. Well, let's do it over here. Let's keep that hover effect I had earlier. Div hover. And we could say background color is lavender. Right, so now I have this hover effect. That is actually what's called a pseudo class. The colon hover is a pseudo class. Okay, it's like putting a class on your div, but it's, it's not. It's like that, it's a pseudo class. Okay, pseudo elements, it's like adding a new element to your HTML. Okay, pseudo elements have two colons in them, all right? So let's go ahead and put some actual text here. Um, I'm going to, let's clean up some of these divs here. And we're gonna put, let's get some bacon ipsum here. Okay, we'll just go with this guy right here. Actually, I'm gonna do another paragraph here with the this one, so two different ones. All right, there we go. So let's take a look at what the page looks like first. All right, very small, okay. Um, let me put a little bit of style on it and then we'll deal with it. So get rid of the hover, get rid of this div, ul, stuff, all this crap. And uh, paragraphs, we'll just see font size. 25 pixels, uh, padding, 20 pixels, margin, 10 pixels, font family, trebuchet-ms. There we go. Okay, cool. All right, so now uh, let's take a look at some of these um, uh, pseudo elements, okay? First one, you can actually add content before and after your paragraph or whatever. So I can say paragraph, double colon, before, okay? And the first thing you need to do whenever you're using this colon before is use the content property, okay? Even if you're not gonna add content, you need to set the content property to, to blank, to nothing. Typically, you, you won't necessarily be adding content, you'll be doing other things, which are beyond the scope of what we're going to cover today. But for now, we're just going to show you how to add some content. So this is a silly thing to add, but this is a paragraph. Okay. So now I just added this is a paragraph to my HTML for every single paragraph. Okay. See that? So this little addition got added here, which notice how I can select this but I cannot select this. If I try to highlight and select that, I can't because it's not in the HTML. It's actually in the CSS, okay? But it now, the, the most common use you'll see for this, and if I'm not mistaken, I actually used this um, in uh, Sankey Talks. I think that I added those quote marks right there by using the content before. 
I think I did, that's how I did did that and the content after. I think I did it that way. Um, that way, when the I can just have the HTML just be plain HTML um, and not have the quotes added in there. You can also add an image in in the content beforehand. Okay, if you want to learn more about that, come over again to here and look at the. Um, actually, it's right here at the very top, the before and after. Okay, there's a lot of really good details in here on how to use these. Okay, tons of really good information. It also has browser support too. It shows you, and you can see that most of this stuff is pretty well browser supported. Okay, pretty well supported. Okay, now there is one little catch when you're using these pseudo um, elements with the double qu colons here. IE being IE, right, Internet Explorer, they don't support the double colon syntax, which is, it's supposed to be, that's the, that is supposed to be the way you're supposed to do it. However, all browsers will support that. So if you want to be IE compatible, you need to go this route. My, I say, who cares about IE? And I do it this way. I don't care. If you're using IE, then you need to get a different browser. You're outdated. Or Edge, too. Edge is just as bad. Okay. There's also uh, the after. Okay. P colon colon after. And I can say content. Um, that was a paragraph. Right, I put that at the end, and now when we refresh, at the very end, I have that was a paragraph, right? Okay. Again, this is a silly use case here to do this, but it's just to show you what can happen. You can add content to it, okay? All right, so that's the before and the after. Here are the ones that I think you guys are going to be most interested in, though. And there is the um, first letter and the first line. Okay, so I'm going to go with P first letter whoa what is going on here there we go and I'm going to say font size is 50 pixels and now we get this kind of effect right and that's a pretty common thing you'll see in an article or in a newspaper or even in a book like the very first page of a chapter looks like that right you can also, however, do first line like this. And you can make the first line completely bold or whatever. Let's make the first line font size that and color salmon or whatever, right? And so you can distinguish just the first line being different. And by the way, notice here that um, the first line is ends with ribeye right here. As I shrink it, ribeye is no longer fitting up there. Look what happens. Ribeye drops down the next line, and it's no longer highlighted like that. The browser's smart enough to understand that first line really means the first line. And so as I get smaller and smaller, that first line is no longer the first line, and it becomes regular style. It just happens automatically. Okay? So now, seeing all of these, first line, first letter, the pseudo elements, pseudo classes, um, anybody have any thoughts that they're like, oh, I know how I'm going to use that. I'm curious. I'd like to hear your feedback on that. Anybody? What do you mean? Yeah, Alex. Um, so like during our pizza order form, if somebody were to select a topping, could you use after to like add that image or like a topping? Um, where would you want to, want to add it? Uh, like let's say there is no images. Right. The topping here. Oh, so you want to have like a collection of images piling yeah. up as they select... Um, that would not quite work with the after. That would, you probably need um, a little bit of JavaScript to pull that off. Not much, but a little bit of JavaScript. A cool idea, though. That's good. That's good thinking. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Anything that you're most excited about, about what you've seen? Yeah. Um, I guess just the, uh, being able to target something based on um, the, the attributes. That yeah. Yeah, you could target that's, based on. That's something that I've been trying to figure out for. A yeah, then that's very that can be very useful. Um, I use that quite a bit when I style up forms. I'll say um, so if I have a form with a bunch of inputs, I'll do this kind of thing where I say um, input where type um, equals text, 
right? And I'll style all my text forms like that. And if I want to, you know, I'll style my radio buttons the different way and so on and so forth. Yeah, it's a very common use. Very good. Uh, so again, friendly reminder here, module resources, module two resources is at the very top of that section. Come down here to CSS tricks. That'll bring you to this page right here. Look at all these different ones we have not looked at. Okay, we touched on before and after. We did not do active. We didn't do any link. We did adjacent sibler, sibling and attribute. Let me show you attribute. This is very well documented here. It shows you right here all of the different ones, what they look like, and it has a little comment that tells you what to expect. Okay, uh, They're very thoroughly um, documented here. It's a very, very good site. Uh, but then there's blank. We haven't looked at that. We haven't looked at checked. Um, we did look at child and class. We haven't done default or di uh, directory. I'm assuming that's what that stands for. I've never used that one. Disabled or um, we have done descendants, right? Which is the one that I've been referring to as child, right? Where you just have this. I've been calling that a child, but it's technically a descendant, right? Um, then there's empty, enabled. We did look at first letter, first line, first child. We didn't look at first of type, focus, focus within. We did cover general sibling and hover. We didn't look at any of these except for ID. So there's a whole bunch of them here, guys. Come to this page and click on these links. Uh, we looked at last child. Um, we didn't look at most of these. We looked at nth child and nth last child. Um, only child, that's another one we didn't look at. There's so many different things. Placeholder, That's there's a placeholder shown and there's a pseudo element placeholder. Read, write, read only. All kinds of stuff here, guys. Check this page out. There's a ton of really good information here. And by the way, on the right-hand side of this are all the properties, okay? These are all the selectors. These are all the properties. And so every single property that's in, that any tag has for CSS, it's all right here. And it's a lot, but it's not probably not as many as you might have thought. It's a pretty small list overall, okay? All right, any questions? Yeah? Um, nothing other than IE only accepts. So the question was, what's the difference between using two colons and, and one colon um, right here? And the answer is that this is the proper official syntax that all browsers support except for Internet Explorer. And so they only do it this way. And the reason why is I think originally when the, these pseudo elements first came out, they were all single colon. And then the powers that be decided we want to sort of separate those from the, the pseudo class, the pseudo um, classes and the pseudo elements. They wanted to distinguish them. So they came up with this idea of double colon, but IE just hasn't gotten on board yet. And so if you want, and so because it was the original way to do it, all the browsers still support the old way. And that will make you compatible with Internet Explorer as well. But again, I don't care about Internet Explorer, so I, I never code to it. I will occasionally test for it. But here's the worst case scenario. So th think about this. Let's go to first uh, letter. And we refresh this. Okay. So this syntax here, uh, assuming IE still is crap, I think I have IE on here, or Edge. Yeah. So let's check it out. Let's check out Edge here. It may actually work now. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, it is working, okay? So maybe they support it now. But if they didn't, big deal. Your B isn't pink, right? I mean, it's not a big deal, which is why um, a lot of times um, some of these visual elements, um, they're, if, you, if you don't care about browser support, uh, it's okay to not care about browser support, I should say, if the stuff you're doing is purely cosmetic and it's not really affecting the whole layout of the page. And so if somebody from... Internet Explorer comes and looks at this. Let me see if I actually have Explorer. Uh, Explorer, or I think it's called iExplorer. Yeah, still have IE here. So let's try that. Yeah, it even works on IE still now. Yeah, so uh, it apparently it's being supported fully now. So maybe that's a an old old news that I have in my head there. But uh, it's something minor like that. It just makes it look a little nicer. It's not that big of a deal if it doesn't show up um, on your uh, other browsers. All right, other questions? 
So some of these things, how would we have done them before? Like, how would I make that capital letter like that before if I didn't have this uh, first line, first letter business? Any thoughts on how you might pull that off? Yeah, you could put, well, you'd have to put a span tag around the B, right? Or something like that. And then target that span tag. Well, that's kind of a pain in the butt to have to do that for every single paragraph in your text, right? If, if you wanted it to be styled in every paragraph. So it's nice that you have this option now to do the first letter, okay? So let's take one last look at this page here. And there is, a, yeah. What I wish they had was nth letter. That would be cool. Because I've done this before where I put a span around this, and then I put a span around the A, and then close it, right? And then I span, um, so let's go ahead and do span on that. Oops. So I've done this kind of thing before. It's a pain in the butt. There's actually a JavaScript um, little plugin you can get that will put these spans for you here. But now that I have that, let's turn this business off. Okay. Go back and look at it. Okay, now what I can do is target all those spans, and I could say span uh, first child. Actually, first of all, I'll say span all spans, and we'll say font size 25 pixels, so it's pretty big. Did I miss something here? Oh, it's already 25, thanks. Uh, so 15. There we go. Oh, did I miss my C there? Uh, yeah, I did not put an open one on there, and I closed it in the wrong spot. See why this is a pain? So now I need to open this one. There we go. Okay, so that's part one. Part two. Span first child color red. And let's go ahead and copy this whole thing here. And we'll say uh, nth child two color blue. Follow what I'm doing here? And nth child three color orange. Nth how many letters are there? Five, four, color orchid, which is basically purple. What are all the colors of the rainbow? What am I missing? Yellow, green, I don't know, something like that. So now you get this effect, right? Which is cool looking, um, but it's a pain in the butt. Well, with JavaScript, which we'll learn later, you can do stuff like that um, a little bit more easily, okay? You can do that with JavaScript. Uh, and I can, I can generate CSS in JavaScript. I can generate HTML. Also with PHP, I could do that in a loop, right? Add these span tags in a loop. There's all kinds of cool things you can do with other languages attached. But for now, this isn't a bad solution, right, to manually do it. And because the CSS is pretty small here, I would probably do it all like this on one line, right? I would just have them all like that. It's less, less, takes up less space. But now you have this nice, cool little rainbowish effect for there, right? Um, so I've done that kind of thing before in, a, in an H1, depending on what the site was about. And sometimes it's cool to do colors schemes like that. Okay, any other questions about anything? That's the advanced selectors. There's a ton of them. That go to that page and look up the other ones and play around. That's the best way to learn this stuff. Just get in there and play around. Questions going once, going twice.